So, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, oh, we also have Professor Paulo Celso here already. Hello, Professor. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon for someone. Good morning, Professor. So, yeah, I think we can start. Uh, this is the new EPIC Plus SDG Challenge, uh, a new version of our um, old, but not so old, Global Students SDG Challenge. This is uh, just the evolution. We consider this the fifth edition of the event. And uh, the main purpose of the event is to uh, connect people from different universities uh, to develop projects uh, focused on the 2030 agenda from the United Nations. That's it. And to start the event, I'd like to give the virtual floor to our professor, Marcio Muniz, the director of the Faculty of Technology of University of Brasilia. Hi, everybody. Good morning again. Nice to see you all. Uh, probably best to say a few words. Try not to be repetitive because we were here a few weeks ago. But special salute to our international partners, our friends from, from Tunisia, Sabah, Sabah Hariri. A few years ago, I just had my, my travel book to, to Tunisia. I love the country. Uh, this the ruins of Carthage, the Saudi deserts, the souks. Uh, special salute to our friends also from Turkey. I think there might be some here. Exactly one year ago, I was traveling around the country, beautiful landscape, gliding. Uh, special salute also to people from the Netherlands and Denmark. I'm not, uh, venture to say good morning in these languages, but good morning or good afternoon. Uh, to salute our professors, thank you all is there, Paul Celso, uh, Simone, Marcia, and all the others. Second, the importance of the students of our junior company, uh, and all the students all over the the work that are taking part in this in this meeting. I think this is the nice part of engineering. We are used to the hardcore engineering, uh, buildings, machines, production, but here we show the say the the social uh, concerns and the ecological concerns that are also our responsibility. In that sense I give a special salute to our uh, partners in the Central Bank of Brazil and uh, have a nice meeting. Best wishes to you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. It's our pleasure. Uh, yeah, we, we need to have uh, these initiatives to uh, yeah, develop uh, in engineering uh, the vision of 2030 agenda and also to bring to the sustainability uh, the engineering view so thank you very much and now the virtual floor uh, is going to be given to the president of Grupo Gestão the junior enterprise of production engineering uh, of University of Brazil uh, which is the the main organizer uh, of this event. Please, Lucas Cavalcanti, the floor is yours. Virtual floor. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here one more time. Um, as Fabi introduced me, I'm Lucas Cavalcanti, the current president of Grupo Gestão. And so this time I'm just going to say very quickly about Grupo Gestão. So it's the Junior Enterprise of Production Engineering from the University of Brasilia, as you know. And some fact that I think that is very important this time is that we really believe that we create a better future for the development of tomorrow's leaders by acting protagonism roles today. And how come and how we do that like uh, since those days and stuff and, and as a junior enterprise is because like through the execution of consuming projects and usually in that impact at least one SDG goal, uh, one SDG. So mostly is the eighth goal that is decent work and economic growth. And I'm saying all of this because it has all to do with this partnership 
and the EPIC plus SDG challenge. So that's why we support so much and appreciate this event. And it's also one of the reasons that is so relevant for us as a junior enterprise to conduct this international, international, internationalization effort focused on the United Nations 2030 agenda. So uh, we're very pleased, very honored with this opportunity. And I would like to thank you all and hope you have a great time during the following days in, in this event. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Lucas. Uh, yeah, really good. Uh, we, uh, we, we don't need to say how important uh, was and is the support of Group Gestão because it's not the support. You are, it's powered by Group Gestão. So uh, I, thank, I thank you very much for your words and also for the great support in the whole period. So uh, right now we, we go to uh, uh, already traditional, we could say, part of this event. Yeah. So I must say the official good morning to everyone. Again, saying, uh, 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 yeah, again, welcoming <laughs> the director of the Faculty of Technology, all the representatives of uh, the international institutions, our fellow professors uh, as well, our de de uh, dear students that are the main uh, like purpose of this event, and all, all of you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor to be here today. Uh, for the opening ceremony of the new EPIC Plus SDG Challenge. I'd like to start saying that this event was created for students, by students, with the honorable help of our professors. The new EPIC Plus SDG Challenge is a student-led initiative for developing solutions and possible products that can be strategic to the achievement of the 2030 agenda. When you hear that students decide to get together, aiming to look for solutions to these great problems, maybe it could sound like, okay, that's typical. Some young people thinking they can sit down and solve all the problems of the world, as if youth was a magic key that would instantaneously bring the answers that are still missing in our world. But actually, that's not what the Epic Plus SDG Challenge is about. It is about understanding our limitations as individuals and as society, but never being skeptical. It is actually about believing that it is possible to create value with hard work and the will to do our best. It is about young people taking the responsibility of dealing with the world issues and leading the world wisely. In a way, our planet and humanity get more and more developed not compromising the future and creating progress in the world in a way no one is left behind. Trusting the capacity of every individual, we are working hard to make the 2030 Agenda mindset and the entire sustainable mindset more and more present in people's routine. We know individuals must have the appropriate social structure to keep their sustainable habits. Therefore, the recognition of the importance of well-modeled public policies and private initiatives is essential. As a very good way to help our society modeling good policies is to have many minds unsatisfied with the persistency of the current issues. We can never think all the work is already done. We can turn a blind eye to people suffering every day and even dying from diseases caused by lack of sanitation. We can turn a blind eye to children dying because of violent world a violent world that they didn't help to build. We can turn a blind eye to people agonizing because they have no access to food or water, or to people like the waste pickers, which are our one of the main public that we are targeting here. Uh, these waste pickers who got to a point in their lives that they, their best option uh, got to be to survive from, from what other people reject. And of course, we can turn a blind eye for the institutional negligence sometimes uh, that allows our natural resources to be damaged. You cannot undo that. We can't prevent or we can't pretend we have nothing to do with these issues, even because we know how to prevent them. And we know they are not out of the reach of our human society. We don't need to forget our, ourselves to start cultivating a little more our empathy 
and our compassion with the world around and to work for common good, actually. We need to be courageous and take the responsibility of taking the next steps. We need to believe in our potential to help creating good change. We need to do our best right now with what we have right now. Ladies and gentlemen, the new Epic Plus SDG challenge has just begun. So, yes, to begin it officially, I will give the virtual floor to our professors, starting by Jens. Jens Meyer Petersen, which is our great partner from Denmark, uh, who will be delivering a, a, a presentation for us. Uh, Jens, are you there? I am here, absolutely. And I even have a camera, I think, and I'm looking into the camera now. Wonderful, wonderful. So I will put your presentation on the screen. Uh, let me just see here. Okay, when you see it on the screen, just let me see. Or maybe I can just start and, and you see if you can get it on the screen. And if it not, it's no problem at all. Uh, yeah, okay. So uh, Perfect. it's been a pleasure for, for us at Jolbo University to be a part of uh, uh, this since the very beginning in 2018. Um, and some of the guys who are here from the beginning are also here today, and that's also great to see. So basically, from all the university side, we are a problem-based learning university. So every semester, you can just move to the next slide, Matthias. So every semester, all students are spending like 15 or 20 ECTS. That's more than half of their study on doing semester projects. So semester projects are done in groups. They are submitted in groups, and they are assessed in group exams with individual grades. So that fits actually really, really well with, um, with working with sustainable development goals. What is important to keep in mind is that the projects have to fit with the learning objectives of the different semesters. So we cannot take any arbitrary problem and work on that, but we can find a problem and then we can see it fits with this semester and it fits with this semester for these, for these guys and these girls and so on. And that's also what we have been doing in the in the SCG work together with the with the people here um, in in the meeting today, especially with the University of Brasilia, uh, and also with Section University in the Netherlands, is to um, to say, for example, uh, Victor and Gustav was working on making uh, on teaching uh, young people and children about uh, diabetes. They are studying technology topology. So the communication and how to communicate with those groups of children is really within the scope of their studies. Um, other of our students have been developing, for example, this, this app uh, and the user interface design for, for teaching the waste pickers um, uh, different uh, skills. So that feels that that's within that field of studies. Mm -hmm. So we always have to find out what is the match between the problem and hand and what the students have to learn. And when we manage to find this point, then we are doing really good. Uh, at Alba University, we are working towards integrating the SDGs in all the studies. So um, actually making it part of the learning objectives, that makes it easy, even better to do this kind of projects. So what is important to understand, I think from, from the Alba University point of view, is that students usually form the groups and choose projects at the very beginning of each semester. So in order to attract students from Albert University, we need to have good product proposals in place around September 1 and around February 1. And first of all, we need to make sure that our students know about this possibility to work together with you guys. So I think the visibility is really, really important. Um, but it's a, it's a great product to follow. And, uh, and from Albert University, I can say that this is really something that we are interested in yeah. pursuing and supporting as much as we can. That was my presentation. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jens. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, for us, it's it's like a great honor uh, to have uh, you as partners, you know that. 
uh, and also uh, the students uh, institutionally and personally uh, really really uh, like uh, wonderful and yes so uh, so I thank you very much again Jens and now I would welcome Natasha but I uh, I, I think she had a problem but I don't know if she could get in Natasha are you there okay I think Natasha is not here uh, yet but if she can get in, um, yeah, uh, we, 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 we then come back later. Right now, I, I will have to skip so this uh, the, the, uh, Natasha for a, while, for a while. I think she is having some problems. Uh, right now, I'm going to welcome uh, Professor Khaled Rafayed from Esprit Tunisia to talk a little bit about uh, our partnership, uh, Puma platform, which is an interesting pl platform that aims to connect the university projects to exter the external market for, for companies to be able uh, to, uh, uh, to actually uh, go for uh, students and work together during the semester. So, Khaled, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes, hello, everyone. Perfect. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, perfect. Yes, so hello everyone. It's such a pleasure uh, being here uh, surrounded by uh, many uh, different students and teachers from different countries. Uh, it's such a pleasure uh, being part of this uh, collaboration and partnership. So I'm going to share my screen, giving a short presentation on two modules that we have been developed in collaboration with the University uh, of Brasilia and uh, ESPRI, which is the School of uh, Engineering in Tunisia. Okay, um, so does anyone can see my screen right now? Yes, perfectly. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Good. Yes. Can you put it in? Uh, uh, okay, good. Um, okay. So uh, let me just uh, give a quick reminder that this project has been developed by uh, uh, professors, uh, myself, um, just put this somewhere, yes. So uh, myself, so the project is uh, consists of two modules from of Puma, which is a platform for integration of different functionalities and we'll see today how uh, we can uh, take advantage of the, the Puma by adding new modules, taking education to the next level. So as I said, this project has been developed uh, and proposed by myself, Khaled Jr., um, Mrs. Uh, Simone uh, Monteiro, and Professor uh, Joao Melo da Silva. We have uh, many students here with us having been uh, involved in uh, this project. So. We have Brazilian students, which are Julia, Isabel, Yasmin, Bianca, Mateus, and finally Everaldo. And we have Tunisian students, Mohamed, Adam, Mohamed Aziz, and Ihep. So let me first start with the first project, which is consists of an application called consisting of team building through students' preferences and competencies. So first I will give a quick introduction, then the issues, then proposed solution, and then some using technologies. So for the introduction in project-based learning, because this is the context of the project, teachers make learning come alive for students. But there are many issues regarding PBL projects. So the most important ones here, the problem, problematic, is related, is related to the fact that there is a lack of coherence and equitability when joining a project for a group of students. So this will dramatically affect the project performance in a sense that uh, there is a big difficulty here integrating new students to a project and especially how making the, the right, uh, right setting so that the project is fluid and reach its goals. So the reason why we decided to do this project is because we want to make things automatically done in a, a way that the project and handling the project and the teams within the project in, a, in an automated way. So the motivation here is to make a 
an application uh, in PBL that is self-organizing. So it consists of self-organizing a group of uh, students, uh, providing then high equitability, transparency, and coherence. So the project, project solutions consist of many functionalities. We have user management, we have project management, we have group and vote management in a sense that we have some people, take, we need to take some decisions when we create a group of students automatically. So this is done through votes and through consensus. So here we want to, uh, students to be involved and choosing themselves in a, uh, a group so that the choice is made in a, a democratic way and that everyone is aware of his responsibility within the group. So documentation management also, we will be uh, dealing with documentation here. We have statistic and history, we have events and workshops management, and finally communication module. So this is just an overview of the application that we propose, what they call edu, which is just a module within the Puma uh, the platform. Um, the user technologies consist of five, four technologies. So we have the database called MongoDB, uh, which is no SQL uh, technology for uh, uh, creating databases. We have ExpressJS, we have Node.js in the back end. And finally, we have also React, which is in the front end. So now we will move to the second project. It's called Peer Assessment for Holistic Student de de Development. So this second module that was integrated to the Puma consists of some functionalities that allows for students to do self and peer evaluation independently of the evaluation that is given by the teacher so that we have a more, uh, let's say, objective uh, assessment made by students. So the plan first, I will give an introduction, then problematic and motivation, proposed solution. Okay, so first, what is peer evaluation? So peer evaluation or peer review is an educational activity in which students judge the performance error of their peers. So as I said before, we also integrated the self-evaluation where a student based on a project, in a given project, specific project, gives an evaluation for himself as a self-evaluation although for other students involved in this project. It can take different forms depending on the characteristics of its implementation, the learnings, and the le learning context. So the problem we are facing regarding the teaching and learning strategies deployed in our universities, there is a lack of history record regarding the students' performance. So here, usually, in most of the traditional universities, what we usually have is a way of evaluating students by the teachers. So uh, we, we have seen in some universities a way of evaluating students by students, which we call self-evaluation, and also cell, uh, which we call peer evaluation, sorry, and also in some models we have seen uh, some models where we can uh, evaluate ourselves, which we call self-evaluation. Uh, and in this project we focus on both self and peer evaluation. So teachers rarely detect the students' deficiencies early in which it concludes to the students' failure. Sometimes it's very hard for students to follow every for teachers to follow every single student and to, to, to monitor their, uh, uh, their efficiency and to see their weaknesses. Because when we are involved in a given project, sometimes we are focused on the functionality, on the progress, and we forget the aspect that is very important with the, 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 uh, the continuous evaluation. So this project allows for a continuous, spontaneous evaluation by students. Peer evaluation isn't deployed in our universities. We only rely on teachers' feedback. So, as I said, for example, if you take Esprit uh, School of Engineering in Tunisia as an example, uh, we have we don't have any mechanism for peer evaluation. It's not done, or if it's done, it's very ma manual and is uh, is not dependent on the context in which the project has been developed, and it doesn't uh, rely on the BPL aspect or project-based uh, learning aspect so the motivation here so why peer evaluation so peer evaluation provides a structured learning process for students to criticize and provide feedback to each other on their work it will help them improve their performance on assets so what peer evaluation can solve it engage students in the learning process and deploys their capacity to reflect on a critically evaluate their overcoming and skill 
development. So the proposed solution, as we said, is to create a web application in which students can perform self and peer evaluation so that they can improve their performance on assets assessed works and also we can provide a mechanism when we can suggest uh, naturally and automatically some workshops for students based on their weaknesses so for our future perspective in these two, two projects so the first thing is to develop and integrate the whole project management application in one single centralized application in puma so our final uh, goal here is to be able to make sure that these two models are very smooth with the basic and the already developed or implemented modules of Puma so that we can have one single centralized uh, platform. Improving the team building and group management such as statistics, documentation, reviews. Uh, uh, we can also uh, have history of students uh, involved uh, and their performance involved uh, in other projects improvement of self-assessment or self-peer assessment by making the micro skills fine grained and more detailed. And also we can add some contextual awareness mechanisms, such as, for instance, based on the time, on the location, the cultural aspects, we're taking this to the next level, meaning that we can give an evaluation which is more concrete and more objective based on a given context. And also we can have uh, some kind of monitor monitoring using watchdogs in a way that we can watch, for example, some teachers can specifically decide to watch a given student and his performance uh, in a way that we can continuously make sure he is doing the progress we would like to reach. Improving the personalization also of the project management application such as Trello. For instance, we have integrated in the uh, team building application, we have included Trello where we can manage the project. So we would like to make it more uh, developed, including courses, syllabus, uh, programs, and outcome section in these two modules, and adding university management uh, and collaboration section, meaning that now we can have, uh, we can have a management uh, or administration for different universities, so where each university have access to the administration part and can rule its own uh, uh, application, part of the application, where they can decide on the settings and the way the application works. And this can also leverage collaboration between different universities. When we can see other universities involved in this project, we can see other universities using these applications, and we can find a way in collaborating using this application. So finally, automated workshop proposal user using artificial intelligence and machine learning. So this, I, I personally have been working on this in past years with a group called Phantom Troop, which is there, uh, it's made of four students from Esprit. So the goal is to make, uh, pro to propose and suggest to students different workshops based on student preferences by using some kind of artificial intelligence, meaning that we created a chatbot that inter interact with students directly using this chatbot in a conversational ways and also it can use some uh, parameters from the profiles of the students and then we can decide which uh, uh, weaknesses they have and how we can suggest automatically different workshops so based on students weaknesses for from self and peer evaluation we can propose different workshops automatically so five also five aspects of partnership that we can develop develop for the next year so using trending technologies such as web development, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence and machine learning, security, for example, cybersecurity, blockchain, cryptography, augmented reality as well, for example, improving the quality of teaching, uh, allowing online teaching, but using also augmented reality, making the sessions and teaching much more uh, interactive. Uh, to 5G applications, uh, and then the other aspect is about education, so we can uh, add also uh, develop other modules to improve education, personal development, professional development and entrepreneurship, and finally intercultural uh, awareness, which is very important for us uh, because since we are collaborating all together and coming from different countries, it's important here to take into consideration the aspect of internationalization and intercultural, the intercultural aspect, leveraging diversity, respect, tolerance, and this can be values that we can define together and 
integrate you know, in our collaboration, uh, future collaboration. And then also finally, we can work in some project related to post-COVID collaboration. For instance, anything that could improve the quality of education, especially in countries that are most affected by the coronavirus. So thank you so much again. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed this presentation and looking forward to collaborating with all of you very soon. Thank you very much, Haled. Uh, there was like really good to see uh, the res retrospective of these two models of the platform that we are aiming to develop uh, to integrate. Uh, yeah, to oh, it's also it's an integration uh, of the market to the university and also uh, automation of many PBL processes, which is uh, what we have been developing the next the last the last semester with. Uh, Halet and the Tunisian team. Uh, thank you very much, Halet. It's a huge pleasure uh, to have our partnerships and we have a lot of great work uh, for the future as well. So, now uh, I'd like to invite uh, to occupy the virtual floor our uh, great professor, which was uh, uh, our partners since the beginning of the SDG Challenge uh, initiative, uh, which is Professor Ana Flavia Barros Platio, if I if I if I can pronounce it properly. Um, and to do that, uh, Professor, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, Professor. Perfectly. Uh, are are you going to use your slides over there? Uh, no, I just have a PowerPoint presentation. I just would like to talk a little bit. Uh, so um, thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you for being uh, letting me be part of this project. And uh, yes, you did pronounce my name correctly. It's Platio. Yes. So your French is good. Well done. <laughs> yes. um, what I, I'd like to talk about uh, the same message I had uh, last time, that is, um, why is it important to link the local perspective with the global perspective? And uh, there are many texts in uh, international relations about how those connections can be made. And in five minutes, I'd like to join a little bit what Haled just said uh, in terms of post-COVID challenges so your next challenge uh for maybe next year or i don't know how how much time you need is to exchange views uh among all your countries i understand there are at least five countries involved and um try to discuss uh, as students, what kind of technology is necessary and adapted to your needs and uh, what uh, did work uh, well for you this year and what did not and how you can um, try to build a kind of model or some options for students from your student perspective. Um, I think it's very important that you uh, participate actively in this discussion that we are having now in our University of in Brasilia and uh, I'm part of the council that uh, votes all the text that is the CEPE with the Pro Vice Chancellor and what I see is that uh, professors have different views on what should be done in this post-COVID uh, or end of COVID now. And I think that your role uh, as technology users and technology adapters is extremely important for the rest of the university students community. And I think that if you exchange views, um, counting on the fact that uh, in the University of Brasilia, you are around 50,000 students summing up with the other countries that's going to be a big community and with your knowledge on how to think and design projects with big challenges 
um, I think you can build something really nice and then uh, even connect yourselves. For example, having classes together uh, from your university with the other connected universities and uh, at the same time thinking that you could invite public from the cities where your universities are and trying to connect them to the debate. For example, so you could have a professor like Paulo Cesar, Celso dos Reis uh, um, talking 10 minutes or 15 minutes about a specific point and then having um, the students discussing together and collaborating, trying to build up something. Uh, and I really like the idea of augmented reality that uh, Halet just mentioned. So uh, I'd like to bring a new challenge for you. And the challenge is think of how you, what university, what class, what project would you like in this era of end of COVID and uh, we call this um, a VUCA scenario or any kind, the many different um, uh, concepts. VUCA uh, is vulnerability, uncertainties, complexity and ambiguities. That's just one simple and old concept. You can also build up a new concept for you and stress what this COVID crisis has brain has brought to your student agenda. So I'll stop here, um, just watch you and uh, I'll keep in touch and I'll be always very close to you if you need any help or any more difficult challenges count on me. So thank you very much, Mateus and all the participants. And it's a brilliant uh, idea, brilliant initiative. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Anna. It was a pleasure to hear that. And also really important point uh, on what, why local uh, actions matter. Uh, and also about this post-COVID scenario, uh, especially related to education, which is in Brazil, uh, is being a big problem because uh, despite the situation of the universities, which is the top of the chain, we are talking about a lot of uh, small people that are having almost no access to education right now. The majority, I, I would say, of Brazilians, Brazilian children right now is having almost nothing uh, of access uh, or in, in education uh, right now and in the uh, last semester and probably in the next one. So that's a very uh, like uh, concerning thing. And it was a really, really interesting. Uh, it was really interesting to hear uh, from you about it. Really interesting. So yes, yes, Matheus, That's that's what I um, I was thinking about um, when I say technology challenges. I think that uh, maybe uh, you could think of uh, possible solutions for countries like Brazil or at least Brasilia, the federal district. Uh, there are so many internet possibilities like national networks or even the university uh, campuses that could be used uh, as open internet for public school students or people uh, in very vulnerable areas. So the idea, the challenge is how to connect those. Uh, it's uh, digital inclusion, how, how to connect people that are disenfranchised. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Really, really, really important indeed. Uh, so, uh, yeah, to continue our sequence with our professors, uh, I'd like to, uh, before, uh, uh, like, have a step back, yeah? And uh, Professor Romero, are you there? Yes. Perfect. I'd like to, uh, to give the virtual floor to Professor Romero uh for a while just to say a few words uh about the partnership and then we keep uh our schedule oh this was not on the program huh this was another pro program but it's just a, a few words i i don't think i don't think we can we can move on without having at least some words professor just uh say a little bit of uh just to close this first part of prof professors <laughs> 
<laughs> that's so, it. It's so it's that's it. That's the G challenge, Professor. Challenge. <laughs> yes. So I'm it's a <laughs> it's a real pleasure to to be here again, and uh, it, it, it it's a pleasure really, uh, and we hope at the end of this three day work we are going to have some uh, solutions already given to, to some of the problems. And especially my students from PSP1, PSP3, and PSP8, we are going to have some kind of uh, a meeting like this at the beginning of the semester in three weeks. And me and Paulo Celso, we are going to be just picking in your feet just to say, okay, this is just a, a training for what we are going to have in, in three or four weeks. So Mateus is going to be also the, the coordinator of the whole team of monitors in maybe 20 monitors for many, many students, maybe 400 students here, just doing this kind of work, uh, distance work. So it is really an experience, very, very nice to have it. And we hope that by Wednesday, we have some uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you are going to be some uh, some meters or some kilometers or some um, more than kilometers ahead of we are now. Okay, thank you, Mateus, and thank you, everybody, for the presence, and we hope uh, a very good event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. <laughs> I apologize again for the unexpected uh, call, but we couldn't move on without you. Come on. That's it. Thank you very much, Professor. So uh, right now, uh, following the program again, uh, I'd like to uh, invite Professor Paulo Salso to uh, the virtual floor to give a very interesting presentation on uh, his experience and perspectives on our main theme of our uh, sustainable development approach right now, which is waste, our big theme, our biggest uh, theme. A lot of students working the next semester, uh, Professor Paulo Celso will introduce the subject here and I will put his presentation uh, on the screen. Welcome, Professor. Thank you, Mateus. Uh, you are good in improvising, and Jomel also. I'm not that so good, but I will try <laughs> to do on the schedule. <laughs> I trained all the weekend. <laughs> well, okay. thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I'm very, very happy to be here with you, and I'm very proud of you, of this meeting, because uh, I could not think on an event like this five years ago. And nowadays it's reality and we are living it and I'm very, very happy. So many people, so many great minds uh, thinking about the, not only the waste, the problem of the solid waste management in Brasil, but in Brazil, but uh, with the conditions of the decent work for our speakers. So I'm very, very happy. Uh, I'm going to talk just, just a little bit uh, as we you planned, uh, Mateus and Melo, just to remember everybody uh, I know every, almost everyone here has already saw some of these pictures, but it's to remember what we're talking about. This is, a, I'm going to talk about the solid waste in, in Brazil. This is a picture of the open dump that was closed two years ago, two and a half years ago. And now we are thinking how we can evolve. So let's, let's go, let's see how we can evolve from, from that scenario. In 2015, we had these this four needs in Brazil. The first one was close the dump. It was uh, uh, unbelievable. We had a, a dump in Brazil, the capital of Brazil, and uh, it was awful. So we had to close the dump. And for this, we had to open the first landfill in the city. In almost 60 years, we did not have uh, a, a landfill here. It was just this dump, you, you saw the picture. And to make the inclusion of the way speakers, more than 1,000 way speakers work in there. But we want to include them like uh, public agents receiving uh, for that work. And the last one was to diversify the municipal solid waste technological routes. So to put new ways to treat the, the solid waste in Brasilia and to see the waste as a resource. So we saw this, this is another picture of the, the, the dump uh, 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 from the drone. You can see the, the, the waste speakers down there. And in the middle of the, the solid waste not covered, 
Yes, Matheus, you, you can go quick. It was the second lar largest dump in the world, and it's a, a, a photo, a picture in the, our dump here with uh, 1,200 way speakers. From this situation between machines and devs, four devs each year in the, in the middle of machines, two decent work conditions is one of the SDG challenges. So you can see what speakers working here. Uh, our students are working with them now for the last two years, but we have so many uh, things to do and the challenges are, are enormous. After we, you can send them, Matheus, the, the presentation, you, you have a link to see uh, some newspaper news about the, the, this disclosure. Definitely. Now we have a, okay. We have this uh, 18 sorting contracts with the waste speakers cooperatives. It's about uh, six, six, uh, 650,000 reais per month for the cooperatives. And uh, you can, can see the new conditions with uh, the protect equipments. And another 11 inclusive collection contracts uh, that with this amount of 350,000 per month. And now we have the, the scenario in Brasilia. You can say it's the panorama for all the country for Brazil. Our policy, uh, national solid waste management policy, the law, is since 2010, we have 10 years. It's an anniversary this month, August. However, lack of implementation at local level, Brazil is an example of this. The sanitation legal framework was approved last month and it changed some issues in Brazil. Now we have more facilities to make the, the taxes for, for paying for this work and we have the facilities to put the private sector working in, in solid waste management. But uh, it's a, a challenge. <laughs> We still have more than 3,000 illegal open dump sites in operation in Brazil. It's amazing. Not in, on, on this size of Brazilians, but uh, medium and small ones. The national average, less than 2% of municipal solid waste of Brazil is recycled or composted. It's unbelievable. Uh, almost 98% is landfilled. So we have to change this. This is the, the great challenge in Brazil. It's not a technology, technological uh, uh, challenge, it's, uh, it's compromise, commitment. Virtually no waste to energy initiatives in Brazil. Uh, high potential for the, the mitigation of gases, of uh, greenhouse mitigation in municipal solid waste management also. We, I'm working in this very, very deep. And most municipalities do not have the technical capacity and are lacking support to define the most appropriate solution for solid waste management. So I have a, a, just a, a, a new picture here, Mateus. Yep. And you can see it's a report of the World Bank. I don't know if you can see Brazil, where is Brazil? But you see the, the blue, uh, are all the waste that is recycled or composted in the, some countries, the first one is Austria, then Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, and down there we have uh, Russia and uh, Romania and Brazil and Turkey. And we have the, the, the red, it's the waste to energy uh, solutions, and in the yellow is the landfill. Landfill in, uh, in a landfill or in a, in, a, in a dump. So you can see that if you don't put uh, waste to energy in the side of recycling technologies, it's not easy to reduce the landfill of the, the waste. Brazil have less than 2%, it's unbelievable. And it's uh, the opposite of some, like Germany or uh, Singapore or Taiwan, where you have 98% not landfill. So we have to change this scenario. Brazil is a, a huge country, we cannot put this uh, this challenge at side that we have done in the last 20 years. So, next one. How to evolve more? We are here in EPIC. So, promoting and enabling improvement of... I, I put just three uh, challenges here because it looks... they are huge for us. So, uh, how we can improve waste pickers' working process? Uh, we have uh, so many people working in this now. 
technical and personal. When I say personal, because technical is the process, like they, what are they doing with the waste, how can they, they improve the, this, this process of managing the waste. But you have the other side, because uh, the, the waste pickers, they are not uh, very uh, uh, trained uh, working people. So they, they, they need some things like the initiative of financial education for them. They, they use to earn money for the day, and now they earn money for the month. It's a huge challenge and change on their lives. So have this this great great uh, uh, meet the to, to meet the, this challenge to change their ethical financial uh, financial education. The second one is appropriate municipal solid waste treatment and management technologies. Uh, we have the IoT group here, and uh, they are making a great job. So we can put uh, more technologies in management, and we're also putting more technology in treatment in Brasil and in Brazil. Uh, it's not new technologies or technologies from another countries that we must, uh, we say, tropicalize here. And the third one is preventing the spread of waste pollution. And we have the group of river waste here uh, for plastic waste that are working very hard to start this, this issue in Brazil. And in Brazil, we don't have uh, so many uh, initiatives in, in that field in Brazil. The second way to evolve more is tackling key critical Implementation by years, we have so many in at local levels, so I have to change it. I lived eight years with the government, local government in Brazil. It's not easy to to tackle this. And the third one is help the decision makers at municipal level to to make this this change, this movement, this initiative. And I, I will put a spoiler here. It's a toolkit from a project I'm working with some students. Uh, of uh, our university from the project the name is Protager and uh, the, the, our uh, fellowship here is with the GIZ and the spoiler is there you can put it's a, yes you can put a, because it's it's a, a toolkit we have nine tools and uh, in two different blocks the first one is, is a green block and the second one is a blue block with some tools uh, you can see we have six guides and three tools. When I say tool, it's a simulation tool where we can put some uh, uh, data and change it and make simulations of scenarios, future scenarios for uh, technologies, the A3, and for GAG emissions in the B1, and for calculation of waste fees and before. So we are going to put this box, this toolbox available in September, in two months. All the nine, nine, nine tools will be uh, in the internet, they are free. And we have, I have so many students to work with them. And I'm here calling new students, them who want to work in this, in this tools, any one of them, we can make, I have some projects on this. Uh, we, have, we are going to have some distance learning courses that will have this, okay? In, after November, these courses will, take uh, place at, after November. Okay, and Mateus? And just remember, uh, the waste is not a problem only in Brazil. Uh, today we, have, we generate about 2 billion tons of solid waste annually. And for the World Bank, in 2050, we are going to generate 3.4 billion tons. So you can see the plastic in the rivers, the plastic in the sea, and we have waste pickers all over the world, not only in Brazil. So Professor Romelli loves this number. It's 40 million waste pickers in Brazil, in, in the world. We have almost one and 1.5 million in Brazil and 40 million in the world. So uh, what we're doing here is working in some research, in some projects and, and a good work to change the reality in Brazil, but we are facing the reality in Brazil and in the world. So. I invite you to participate with this with your heart and let's put it together to change the world, okay? Matheus, I think it's the last one. Yes, you can put another one. You have my name there. If you don't have doubts, I have so many, I can send them to you because I'm, I'm not sure of anything. Thank you very much and 
let's have a great, great event these three days. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, yes, uh, perfect. I mean, this is the the whole context. It's like uh, astonishing, actually, to see, for example, numbers like two percent of our waste being recycled only. Two percent is like we have ninety-eight percent of waste going to like uh, not getting back to the to to the production chain or to to the use as if it was like something oh uh, we use it uh, for the first time and then it's not usable at all it's just come on that's a real problem comparing to c countries like german germany and sweden uh, and, and and other countries uh, as well that are like we are at the bottom and we need to to do it also i'd like to mention uh, the financial education uh, point about the, about the projects, we have three main projects uh, uh, to be detailed later. Uh, but yeah, this was really re really important because the financial education for uh, waste pickers is not only like something about they, they they actually have no idea how to manage their money and they have no idea how to earn more money. That's why they decided they they decided they had, they, had, they saw as the only option to work in the middle of the waste. And also the river waste that is uh, avoiding waste pollution in our water bodies uh, all over the world. Uh, we we are we have a project building a, a designing a machine. We have a, a project researching uh, how can we use the plastic that we recover. So a lot of good initiatives, very good initiatives, and also IoT for selective collection, which is also uh, implementation of technology for improvement of. Uh, the situation. So, Professor, thank you very much. Your your experience with this closure of uh, the second biggest dump site in the world is a, a really remarkable thing, and it was really good to hear about that. So, uh, yeah, and talking about the financial education for waste pickers project, uh, we need to understand uh, further. Uh, the financial citizenship, we could say. And to do that, uh, I'd like to invite uh, to the virtual floor Natalia Falcão, uh, which is a master's student of the Middlesex uh, University uh, in England, uh, and also a central uh, employee of the Central Bank of Brazil. And she's going to be talking about the financial citizenship. Uh, which is really important for uh, the way speakers. Natalia, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Yes, hi. Can uh, you give me the yeah. presentation so I can put a presentation? Yes, the I screen? will give you I the I can power. share my screen. Absolutely, absolutely. Perfect, you have it. Okay, let's see. Okay. Not to be able to come to share it. Uh, Natalia, just a, a quick question. Do you use mm -hmm. MacBook or any Apple computer? Yes. Okay, so uh, if you could just send me your presentation uh, quickly uh, to the SD, because we have this problem here. This is uh, this software is really good for many aspects, uh, but uh, it has having some problem. It's uh, well, like we are having some problems with Apple this day. So yeah. Uh, ah, okay. So I'll you show. Just send me, yeah, just okay. uh, reply to any of our last. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then we can, let's just see. <laughs> Sorry for that. No, 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 no. Yeah, uh, no, no worries at all. I, I just, 
yeah, I, this problem of Mac is always a surprise, but in the next times that won't be so. <laughs> because I'm using Google Chrome, so I thought that would be no problem, but okay. I just sent you. Perfect. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Have you received it? Uh, I am refreshing uh, right now. Let me see. Not yet. <laughs> this is a moment for uh, for a break, people. <laughs> Let's have a coffee. <laughs> Perfect. That's it, Professor. My coffee is beside me. I can have the coffee here. <laughs> okay, and I have the presentation. So uh, I'm going to put on the screen right now so we can start and end this. Yeah, I'll make it brief. I'll make the presentation brief to compensate for this time. Don't worry. No, 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 no. You don't need to. You don't need to. Just uh, follow your 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 nor normal rhythm. That will be really good. Let's see. So when you when you see the screen, just let me know. And can you see it? Yes. Wonderful. So I'm here to talk a bit about financial citizenship, uh, broad, big numbers from Brazil. It's not specifically from waste pickers, but I think we can have a scenario how it is financial citizenship in Brazil at the moment. You can press, please. So, but first, what is financial citizenship? It's a new concept that we have been developing for some years but it still need to be more emphasized so it's the exercise of rights and duties that allows a citizen to manage well his or her financial resources in a context context structured for the well-being of the individuals and financial stability of the country and this financial citizenship comprises four dimensions that we call financial inclusion that's when people have access to financial services so can they can use it adequately. Financial education, when people know and understand how to use these financial products in their favors. Protection consumers, because they also need to be protection because it's also two parts involved. It's the financial industry and the citizenship. So they need to have a means to complain about it and to be protected and participation is when the citizen has to say how he wants to the future of this product how he can influence the decisions it's like just a big view of it and why financial services are linked to the sustainable development goals we know that uh, some financial services especially credit and savings can help families to better absorb financial uh, financial shocks accumulate access better manage medical care or invest in education and all of these are important key uh, factors for them to for us to fight poverty to enhance well-being and eliminate some disease so this is very important people can even some invest in crops so they can have a better agricultural development and like Mateo said for a waste pickers case if they don't know how to use the money which financial services are there for them are available because sometimes there are some good financial products but people don't know about it they don't know how to use it so what is there for? Or if they even if they know how to use it, they don't have access, so we got a problem. So I think we this a uh, this financial citizenship is it's a look on the citizens. We have a lot of projects in the central bank that looks of the overall financial system, but this is specifically for the people. So how people use it and how they are getting around it. So I'll talk briefly about big numbers of Brazil. So is 
are people accessing financial services? Is that a, also a big important question? Because they can know everything about it, but if they don't have access, it's a problem. In Brazil, we have a, you can pass it, yeah. We have 86% of bank adults have a bank account, and this number has been sustainable for quite some years. So it's a good number. You can see like people has access, they have means to go to the bank and open a bank account. You can go. Can, you can pass, Matheus. Perfect. And also 100% of our municipalities has a banking, at least one service point in Brazil. So if you go even into small municipalities, we will have at least a banking correspondent. So we, they can, it's a fiscal, it's still important. And this number has been dropping a bit because we have been seeing an evolution of the financial system that has been, we have been changing a lot from fiscal points to remote points. So many more people are using internet to have access to their accounts. So the banks are like seeing that this is going, this development, and they are closing some correspondence and some agencies, but it's still a big number and you still present all over Brazil. Next one, please. So we can see that today, 6% of the transactions are made through remote channels. And so more than half of the transactions that we make daily is through internet or home internet banking or cell phones. However, can change Matheus. However, uh, the fiscal correspondent bank is still an important because 39% of the bills that we pay daily, they are paid through bank correspondent. And this is especially on the low income, basic low income families they especially use more the fiscal correspondence so we still have to pay attention like we are changing to remote we are changing to internet but we still have to pay attention how we are changing and how this process has been made and next and okay we know that they have some kind of access might not be perfect but it's there and how the population is using it is sustainable, how it is. So we know that 44%, next. 44% of adults has a credit operation and credit operation can be good to smooth consumption over time and make it possible to use our resources now. So especially when you're dealing with some shocks and or you have to make future plans credit is a great instrument so we ideally a big part of the population has to has access to it and it's kind of good number but if you will see low incomes this number drops a bit so it's still a point of attention but it's there but when you ask people how they are saving, like all the reports are around that 32% of only adults saved in the past 12 months. It's, this is a concern because it's a very low number, especially when we compare to other peers countries that have similar economies, similar level of income and similar cultural backgrounds also. So why is Brazil so difficult to make savings? This is a problem that we always trying to tackle. And one tool that it's important is financial education because it can stimulate to save and how to manage their financial resources. And so that is always something that we need, need to be investing in and trying to improve because it's very hard to change these habits. And for the last point, we know all of the numbers, but it would be good to compare states and do some comparisons. So we initiated the process of doing a financial index, financial citizenship index, that 
put together some numbers so we can have a broad perspective of how it is the financial system in Brazil. For now, we have developed financial, ideally the financial citizenship would be constructed by four financial, for four index, one for each dimension. But for now, we just have the indicators for financial in inclusion and financial education. For financial inclusion, we decide to put service points, banking relationships, that's how many people has bank accounts, costs and to access credit, that's in interest rate, and how the low income population participate on the credit. And for financial index, we use it, the level of indebtedness, delinquency rates, per capita deposits, and security, social security contribution. This financial education is not exactly like in the first sense that you think of financial education, but it's how people are using their money. So it's a kind of represents what, how, if they are using well their money, sustainable way would be good. I didn't brought the numbers because they are kind of old and I don't know the updated ones because I am on a leave right now. So, but it's just to think which kind of index and indicators could be good for us to implement. So next. And that leaves us with a big problem that from all of the perspectives that I showed you, in the big country, how in Brazil, digitalization brings inclusion or and no exclusion. So we are seeing a phase that more people has been using internet, has been inside the financial system, new tools every day. But what about the people that doesn't have access to internet or doesn't know how to use it or has a very limited power in it? So how we can work on that? And I think the project of financial education to waste speakers, waste speakers can be a, a way to deal with these problems because it's digital and it's financial, it involves how to use financial products and so it's a good uh, perspective. And how to, for the list, how financial services, services are leading to financial well-being of citizens. So how this use of financial services is good for us as citizens? How can we improve and how can we keep developing our financial system, looking at people and also paying attention every time how has been going? And I think that's it. Thank you very much. Any doubts, you can talk to me. That's my email. And now if someone has any question, I am available. Thank you very much, Natalia. Uh, yes, yes, yes. This is scenario of uh, of financial citizenship and also and the definition of financial citizenship is also really important. Uh, for example, this aspect of uh, knowledge about the products available is really, really important because uh, uh, you need to know about it to know how to use it, of course. So, for example, we have a very big problem in Brazil, which is the credit use in a uh, uncontrolled way, uh, which is a problem because a lot of the uh, of, a lot of the families get in high debt, and uh, they it's like it just keeps growing, 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 and their financial health is just um, like completely lost at some point. So thank yeah. you very much, Natalia. Welcome. And also. Uh, like uh, in this context uh, of Natalia, Natalia's great presentation, we uh, have also uh, another really, really special uh, person, uh, actually two people, uh, also from the central bank. Uh, we, we have here João Evangelista and Adriana Câmara, which are uh, the central bank representatives, and they will uh, share with us uh, some of their perspectives on this project as well of mobile education. So, João, Adriana, are you there? Yes, Matheus, I'm here. Great, João. Uh, the, floor is, the virtual floor is yours. All right, thank you. Well, I, I don't have a PowerPoint presentation. I'd just like to say a few words 
thank you all and congratulations to all of you for the beautiful project that is being put up here. And uh, thanks, Natalia, for your presentation straight from England. Well, uh, I would just like to add some points to what Natalia has just said. She mentioned the four aspects of financial citizenship. I would like to concentrate in one of these aspects, which is financial education. What we consider as financial education is, uh, in simple words, a process to empower people to make um, uh, correct decisions. But when we say correct, we're speaking of correct according to each one's point of view. There is no uh, silver bullet that can solve everybody's problems at the same time. So what financial education can provide people with is the ability to make their choices considering their individual scenario, considering their families, considering uh, their circumstances. So in this sense, when we speak of financial education, we're talking about three components. One of them is knowledge, of course. The second one is attitude. And the third one, probably the most important of all, is behavior. So we, we actually, when we speak of financial education, we need to count on economic psychology uh, to help people transform their actions and their, reflection, their reflections into real actions so that they can plan and follow the plans that they have established for themselves. Of course, this will require a little time from people and people need to be provided with instruments that they have, they have not had so far. And when we speak of waste, waste pickers, we're talking about people who are at the very bottom of the social and intellectual pyramid. We probably uh, will we, we'll be dealing with people who are mostly illiterate or semi-literate and uh, these people really will encounter difficulties in planning their financial life, in establishing their priorities. And this is exactly where financial education can help them. And we are not speaking of waste pickers only. We're talking about these adults who live off uh, the waste, but we're also talking about their families. We're talking about their children. So we are speaking of a group of people of, of a whole environment that is around the waste pickers. So uh, in, in this sense, our concern regarding financial education aims to lead people to be able to save money whenever possible, to plan their lives, to plan their expenses, to plan their savings, to plan their credit, and ultimately to use credit if necessary and if they consider it adequate and if they consider that it is worthwhile uh, being aware of the consequences that taking credit will bring to their financial lives, they should consider, they should be able to consider and decide whether uh, taking credit is or not worth it. Those were my brief words. Thanks a lot, Mateus. Thank you all. Let's go on. Thank you very much, João. It was like really at the point because uh, because we know that, for example, the behavioral aspect is vital. It's not something like you you can you can like uh, have uh, many of the problems of financial uh, citizenship and also for for uh, of finances for people uh, being solved with the behavioral uh, corrections. So uh, I think this is one uh, key point for the project as well, that's aiming at uh, um, educating people, like uh, giving information to people so they can uh, actually have a better situation uh, using their new knowledge. So thank you very much, Juan. It is uh, always a pleasure. And yeah, I, I only have to thank you. Mateus. Tell me, Professor Romello. Yes, I have to say just a few words. Perfect. perfect. Uh, because uh, financial education is going to be a main line of PSP1 course. So uh, me and, and Professor Paulo Celso, we, we expect to have 15 to 20 projects in this area. 
So we are going to need very, very much the, the contact with you in Central Bank as advisors, uh, and especially when you are talking about uh, the, the four big points that we have for modeling uh, business. We are talking about uh, technology and the process that we have. We are talking about the results of the projects and the results are the deliveries that the project have a program and also the operations that we got from the projects during the project, okay? And we have markets. What are the, the needs that we have in the society? And we have a cybersecurity. This is one thing that we have to say, okay, confidentiality, integrity, availability, and authenticity regarding data. So these are the four blocks of cybersecurity that you are going to be dealing in the projects regarding financial education, okay? So we are hoping and we are really certain that we are going to have your help in during the semester, especially in behavioral aspects and gender aspects. It's a pity that uh, Adrian is not here because uh, he had, she had a, a work on, on gender aspects of uh, financial education. So tell her that we are counting on her also, okay, regarding the gender uh, aspects. Thank you, and it was really nice to have your participation in the event. Thank you. Thank you, Natalia, for accepting our invitation. We hope to join to join you soon, and you can participate here as well as we've been doing for some time in the discipline. And thank you again, and thank you, John, for participating also. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. It was very nice to be involved. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you to all um, uh, for the presentation. Thank you, Professor, that uh, brought the point that it is really important. A lot of students will be working on the, this financial education project, uh, not only from the PSP1, but PSP3, uh, PSP2 maybe, and also PSP5. So uh, a lot of students will be involved uh, on solving this problem of uh, financial citizenship of waste pickers. Really important. And also uh, a special thanks for Professor Marcia, who is the coordinator of the production engineering uh, undergraduate course, uh, undergraduate uh, program of uh, University of Brasilia. So thank you very much, Professor Mar Marcia, for also uh, uh, like uh, to, to help actually us uh, by bringing our partners uh, from the central bank and also managing uh, this great relationship. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mateus. Thank you, Professor. So mm, right now, uh, after uh, this context, uh, specifically about financial education, uh, we are going to have a, 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 a also a really special uh, participation here. Uh, the CEO of the Ribbon startup uh, that was elected one of the 30 uh, mo most uh, with high, the highest potential startups of Brazil. Uh, the CEO of the startup Ribbon is here. It's a, st a startup uh, that was uh, actually uh, that, that works with donations, but in a very special way. They have a business model uh that allows like people donate without money just using their smart smartphones so that's why there is a lot of potential on this and that's why we can connect this with uh the waste pickers initiative because as we know uh, uh the waste pickers are in need of that and they will be using a mobile education platform for their education so I think Ribbon has much to 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 help, and it, hopefully they are our partners. So uh, they will be presenting them, themselves uh, with their CEO, Rafael Rodeiro. Rafael, are you there? Hi, Mateus. Yes, yes, I am. I'm here. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, are, are you going to uh, use the slides yourself, or? 
Yeah, I have some slides here, but um, I'm not able to share my screen right now because I'm not a, a speaker. Uh, don't worry, uh, don't worry. I, I am going to empower you. Great. Great. That's fine. It's here. So can you, can you see my screen? It's working. Uh, not yet, not yet. Do you use, do you use MacBook? Oh, okay, no. <laughs> All right, perfect. Working? Yes, that it is. That it is. Great, great. Oh, guys, sorry if if, if we have some gap background noise. Uh, we have to, I have children here, so it's a mess. I have two, two babies. It's it's in my house right now. Not my children, but yeah, we have children here. <laughs> so um, uh, let's go. Thank you for the introduction, Mateus. Uh, we are a startup here in Brazil, where we are soon growing international. And what we do, um, we are a donation platform, uh, and do in that in a different way. So we are a freemium donation platform that millennials, we have over 40,000 40, monthly active users. And, and I said that millennials and Generation Z just because they are our main target, but we, people from all ages use your app, our app. Uh, and that's that's the big deal. It's a freemium donation platform. Freemium, what, it, what, what does this mean? It's, uh, you can donate to charity for free because it, the donation is sponsored by big companies and foundations and philanthropists. Uh, but you can donate with their own money as well. It's almost like a Spotify for donations. Uh, so it started by, by building something uh, inside the, the, the these two generations, uh, because they are two of the most altruistic generations ever. Uh, but that's it. They think that the niche charity to, to charity is boring. So that's why we build a platform to engage a, a lot of people. Uh, that's a huge market as well. But the main thing, uh, the, the the main people that are working with this, we have uh, 18 people dealing with it right now, and with big mentors such as Marco Gomez, Marcelo Salles, and investors like Red Point Ventures. Um, and what we do, uh, in the, I, I think the most important thing that we should talk right now in this, in this event is uh, for the philanthropist side and the foundation side, why they donate with us. Uh, for the user is clear, okay, I can donate money from the foundation, I can donate money from and, uh, big companies and I can choose the, the, the project that I'm going to donate and we do that in a gamification style. So me as a user, I earn 100 ribbon, 100 ribbons, that's like a virtual coin um, as I become more engaged in the platform and when I earn these ribbons, I can donate, for example, 100 ribbons, I can donate one day of safe water for a person, or I can donate one day of health, of basic healthcare. What you are doing right now with um, people that, are, that collect garbage in the streets, uh, with the, the charity Pink My Carroça, they are a very good charity. Uh, so we are giving um, essentially money to these people, through our platform right now, uh, with the help of big sponsors. Uh, so, with our ribbon, that's the way it works. So, a foundation is going to donate five hundred thousand uh, dollars to a charity, ABC, to the charity, and that's it. It's done. They just donate and then donate by themselves and alone. With ribbon, what do we do? We integrate our users in the style of matching gift, matching fund style. So, uh, with this foundation. And in the end, what happens is the charity always raise more money with us because our users donate together with this foundation. We have some profit in there, but it's always uh, the same amount of the of the foundation. Uh, sorry for this uh, notifications. And that's it. In the end, we always raise more money to the charity. So um, that's what what we wanted to do. In this project. When you when when you start to generating uh, huge donations from um, big sponsors, it doesn't matter if it is uh, uh, profit from the profit sector of uh, or the government. Um, each it doesn't care. We can increase that amount of money by plugging our forty thousand monthly active users in the donation amount. Um, 
that's that's the whole idea that I, I would love to bring to 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 you guys, and that's it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much, Rafael. It is like uh, it is really good to see that things are working uh, for 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 Reborn like in a great way, and also because the the this business model uh, that uh, you are you are building is just uh, insanely nice because you. You can like at, at the same time that you intermediate donations, uh, and as you said, you make a, a, a like some profit of it. You also uh, are able to uh, increase donations because you create a relationship uh, like uh, of people with the donations environment. So at the so it's a win-win. Uh, platform is a win-win business model, and that's beautiful to see because all the sides win so all the sides win so uh really good and also uh, the possibilities of connection of the mobile education for away speakers uh a platform with uh, the ribbon framework is also real as you mentioned so uh, uh we we are still uh, planning how to do it but we can definitely have great results uh, with this connection and the great work of uh, the students that are here and all all the students uh, that will be working on the semester so thank you very much Rafael. it was a re really good to see that thank you Matos. thank you so uh and also uh, i i i would like to to <laughs> let here uh invitation to everybody to download the Rebo app come on <laughs> it's really good uh, really good app and everybody uh, i i think everybody will enjoy it uh, so, uh, as we finished uh, with the Ribbon startup, mm, we are done with our speakers. Uh, we are uh, done with our speakers for today. So the context, uh, the main context uh, contents were already presented. Right now, I am going only to. Uh, present a little bit of the uh, following activities that will be tomorrow and on Wednesday, which is uh, which is basically a hands-on, <laughs> virtual hands-on um, dynamics to develop proposals for future students to work on. So we're going to have the opportunity to build the proposals to like architect uh the work of future students uh and uh many of the students are already here but most of them aren't because we have like more than uh, 100 students uh involved in, in a lot of people so but we are going to plan their work we are going to make their proposals based on our three main uh projects which is the river waste mobile education and the iot but also we're gonna have a very special project uh, of uh, diabetes uh, for way speakers, uh, which is will be led by Gustav and Victor Krag. But I will present my screen right now just to 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 make it a little bit more clear. So, can you see my screen already? Yes, I think so. I think so. I, I actually can. Oh, okay. You're using uh, signals to to inform me. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, if you come here to our website, you can see uh, some of our contents, uh, the 2030 agenda, uh, and yeah, the explanation of everything. But you can also you can also go here to participate in the event. Mm. And when you come here, you can you use register uh, that uh, many of you most of you used uh, this button we have downloaded the program so we have uh, also conference environment and when we come to conference environment you can access the conference environment uh, pressing go and then here we we come to a trello board which will be uh, the main the main framework like the main platform uh, for our second day which is tomorrow you can see the day here uh, i don't know if the size is good yep you can see the day here 
and, you know, and so this uh, every block of this are rooms. Uh, so these are the rooms. Uh, we have the uh, 2 p.m. room, which is mobile education. We're gonna have two mobile education rooms. Uh, 2 p.m. I must say Danish time. So 2 p.m. Uh, Central European time. It's not Brazilian time. Brazilian time. It's 9 a.m. So uh, I, I also insert this here later because uh, to avoid confusion. Uh, and also we have the second moment, uh, which is 4:30 p.m. Uh, with a lot of rooms in parallel. So we're going to have the IoT selective collection, uh, uh, the diabetics project, and all the river waste. A lot of people uh, will be participating in the river waste. And as a third time, we're going to have the Puma uh, room, which will be discussing the proposals and making the proposals for Puma. So if, you, if we click here, for example, uh, in this room uh, of developing an op uh, development of an operation of a river waste collector, automation and prototyping design. So this room will make a proposal for a machine to recover uh, to recover plastic waste from water bodies. We already have this problem, this project going. Daniel Victor is the leader um, of the project, and he will be also be leading this room for developing this uh, proposal. Uh, with uh, we have the, uh, the, this first participant here, which is Carlos, Pedro, and Elizabeth. Uh, they will be working on this proposal tomorrow uh, at 4.30 p.m. Danish time, Norwegian time, because Elizabeth is Norwegian. Uh, so, and here, every team has a drive folder. You can click the drive folder, and then you're going to, oops, I opened in a, in a new, you can click the drive folder. Tomorrow we'll be here, the template uh, for developing the, the, the proposal. So we, we have a template, and then, Every student will be given uh, suggestions to build this template, and also, uh, uh, like, uh, we, we're gonna have uh, in this section a lot of dynamics. Mostly, the students that are already involved with the project will ask the new students. For example, one of the dynamics is that uh, the new students will uh, ask some questions that uh, probably a new student that would work in this proposal would ask. And then you're going to put into the template. So everything we work into this template, I will open the template right now over here. Just a second, uh, just for you to, to have a look at it. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK. Projects. Yep. All right, all right. So we have the template here. So this is the template. Uh, we have a context over here, um, and the main areas that must be approached by each uh, each team that will be proposing a new project. This is very simple. Many of the we, we have proposals that already have some uh, things filled here to give the context, and then we're gonna have this dynamic, and at the end. Every team will need to send. Uh, we will, will need to send the the template to these emails here. Emails to deliver the final results. One of these emails is the official email of the event, and another one is the this crazy email over here that will uh, already everything that you attach to this email will come to your room. So uh, that's it. A simple way to attach this. Uh, your final document to here. With this deliver, you are uh, you are okay to get your certification, and also uh, you have uh, like your full active participation in the event. So uh, before that, let me just uh, present something here because we also have the template here, which will be inside your drive folder. So remember, you can. Yeah, yeah, you can use any of, uh, of this one. You can you can come to this your drive folder. You're gonna find a template. Uh, then, if you come to the template, you can come to this link here, and you can access go again, and you will find 
the main strategic uh, sheet of our project, uh, which is we, we have these three main front, uh, battlefronts, which is the mobile education, the river waste, and the IoT, and also Puma, actually four battlefronts. So we have here the leading, uh, the leaders of each room. Uh, you, you can always access this. And this all is in the context of our uh, of our main theme, which is preventing, reducing, reusing, recycling of solid solid waste uh, via cooperatives of waste pickers. So that's it. That's the basic structure. We also have the platform for unifying methodologies of active learning uh, uh, projects, which is Puma. All these guys over here are in the plume in the in the puma uh, framework and this here are the other projects with their times over here uh, i think it will be very clear for anyone who 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 access this uh this environment here i will turn it public right now because it wasn't public until now so now everyone can see it and you can access and uh you will receive also an email later with your specific room so as you don't need to be uh, searching for your name anywhere so uh, you can you will receive an email with your specific room now i have to open for doubts and then i will uh, make a, a final presentation of a less structure and that will be that so do you have any doubts or comments or suggestions uh, right now um uh, can you hear me Hello, Sandra. I can hear you. Hello. Uh, I had a question. Um, so I see a lot of the problems are connected in a way. Would it be okay to participate in other rooms that uh, you are not a part of? Yes, actually, yes. Especially uh, when you finish, uh, for example, you are part of uh, Gabriela's uh, room, which we will discuss the future of the river waste project. Uh, that came from Germany, so the 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 one that came from Germany, the I could say the origin of the project. Uh, so probably you will end, uh, you will finish much earlier. So it's really really okay to to participate in other rooms if you feel like it. Uh, and you will also everyone that access will also have access to the drive folder of them to have a quick context and uh already like ask, ask some questions to contribute to the new proposals so uh that's perfect sondra uh, i don't know if that answered your answered your question yeah that answered yeah thanks wonderful wonderful uh any any more questions or comments professors any of the students yeah. Yes, the, the thing is that the, 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 the site is open. So if uh, someone wants to work today, it's okay. It's not necessary to go tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow is just um, an online uh, part of it. So it's open. The work is open from, from now on. Yes, perfect, perfect. Uh, actually, yes, and, and uh, just after this, uh, this moment here, I will be putting uh, the templates over there. Of course, uh, many of the teams have, uh, from the, the teams that already worked uh, on this project, have filled already some uh, fields of their proposals, uh, but that will be available uh, in an average, the, the field proposals will be available in an average of uh, three hours from now. But the proposal itself, uh, will be available just after the meeting, so this meeting. So yes, perfect, professor. If anyone can uh, start writing ideas uh, on the on a template, that's perfect. Perfect. Uh, really good. Really good. Any other comments, professor? No, no, it's okay. Fabinho, Camilla, Camilla asked the question on the. Oh, on the chat. chat. Yeah. Let me see. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, to receive your certification, you need to participate every day. So every day, and also you you need to send the template. Uh, uh, in in the template, you you uh, it's necessary to have the name of the authors of the template. Also for the future students to know 
uh, who are the creators of this proposal. So, so that's uh, that's really good. Um, but also, I know the situation of Camilla is something related uh, to a medical, uh, uh, some, something medical. But I, I, she will be just a little bit late. Camilla, you you won't have a problem with that. Don't worry. So that's it. Uh, any other questions? Uh, uh, how we? Tell me, Professor João Melo. Yes, just a final comment. Uh, at least for for PSP one. Oh, there is a noise here. Oh. Uh, the thing is that uh, think that in the financial education we are talking about uh, one and a half years when uh, one and a half year ago we have uh, the way speakers just fighting with rats and vultures for things and now we are talking about if ribbon and this is really nice to have a ribbon in this thing we may have donations to bitcoins so this is something that is uh, how to transform one thing that uh, uh, a few months ago the people even didn't know what was money and now we are talking about for them to receive donations to bitcoins so uh, ribbon i don't know if uh, rodeo is still in there you are a very very important people in this thing okay because we are educating in the future, somebody that a few months ago didn't know what was money. The money for them was just to get the money for the day uh, expenses. And now we are talking about probably having donations throughout the world for way speakers in Brazil and everywhere if we go to this project in other countries other than Brazil, okay? So think that is a is a very very complex project and a very very interesting problem uh, project for in terms of uh, digital in not the divide the digital inclusion okay as natalia told us okay thank you Thank you very much, Professor. Clearly, clearly, that's a very uh, key point. Uh, Rodeiro is, uh, will be uh, really important to the partnership, and uh, I think we're going to have a great, great uh, result at the end. Uh, and also, I can see here in the chat that, uh, Jens, do you want to, uh, uh, Jens, could you access the, the Trello board right now? Yeah, I saw your question. And I have to try again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I go, I, here, I go participate in the event. I go <laughs> the conference environment. I press go, and magically I get to the Trello board. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect, perfect. So then you can you can uh, you can uh, uh, yeah look all the fields. And of course, I will invite uh, some people to also be editors of the Trello board. But uh, Jens, uh, did you talk anything about an app in the chat? Do you want to talk about that or? I can just say shortly that for the education app, what was developed last time by the, um, by the Danish group was the interface and the design of the interface for the voice speakers with icons, menus, and an idea about the functionality. And what uh, we are doing now is that we're actually developing an app for Android, which can do this. And I don't think it will be the final product, but it means that we have a product to start from and that we have something that we can also show the waste pickers so they can have an idea about how it looks on the phone. Wonderful, wonderful. That's, uh, that's true. Uh, important point is one uh, that maybe wasn't so clear, but uh that's really important thank you Jens. uh the uh we we already have a functional like uh app being developed and we're gonna have it soon uh of the mobile education platform so we would be able already to test with way speakers soon 
But also during this semester, we are going to work on the second phase of this mobile education. This is related to mobile education. So it's really good. Uh, the Danish team is doing an amazing, uh, amazing uh, work uh, on developing this and to bring a very, very concrete result to our uh, initiative. So that's it. Thank you very much, Jens. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, uh, any more questions? Brazilians, Danish team, Norwegian team, uh, team from uh, the Netherlands and uh, Tunisia. Another question on the chat, how been? Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. Marja, Marja, that's a really important question because uh, I actually probably didn't address it as clear as I, I should, uh, as I like from what I see. So let me come back again. Uh, yes, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have uh, a link of Google Drive for each room. So if you can if you can come here. Every team will have a link of Google Drive, and tomorrow you you just need to uh, 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 go to the room that you received the email today and access the Google Drive link over here, and then you're gonna have a call with your uh, with your team. Right now, of course, it's only me here, but uh, you got. I think you understood the the dynamics. So, Marja, did that answer your question? Perfect, perfect. So she answered yes in the chat. So uh, that's basically it. So uh, to uh, make a final point over here, uh, also Professor Romello was uh, really interested on, on this approach. So I think it's uh, interesting to present. Uh, this is uh, our strategic uh, Trello. It's another Trello. It's another Trello. Our Trello with the website is this, this one, but we, we have also our strategic uh, Trello, which has uh, some sections here to show the structure of our project. So we have two main sectors, which is the waste, uh, the waste sector, preventing, reducing, reusing, recycling of solid waste via cooperatives of waste pickers, and also another sector, which is the Puma one, and also one for independent projects. So uh you can see here uh many of the of the projects related to preventing so we have selective collection a lot of projects we have uh triage a lot of projects we have uh, the mobile education app with their internal project so we have more than one project uh like this project will be executed by our students during the semester so just showing you uh, that is uh, a way to show it. We have a city here because we imagine that this is our big city. Uh, this here are the sectors of the city because the city is Brasilia. We are we are thinking about relating the strategy to our city of Brasilia. And then you get to a sector. You have to you have the blocks with different floors and different rooms, and the rooms are the project. So another way to see it. Uh, really interesting indeed, uh, and this is um, just another representation of this uh, sheet here. So just a curiosity, and I think uh, for now, Professor Romelo, other professors, any other comments on what we uh, been talking in this meeting? No, no. Just to say that it was really good, and we we hope to to have some work done very very good work done by wednesday thank you for you all and see you tomorrow on the rooms and uh, wednesday in the presentation perfect 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 professor so that's it uh like i will i will make the same uh, uh the same dynamics the ones who can share their 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 video Please do it because we're going to take a picture right now. So uh, the final picture of the first day. So the ones that can share, Julia, Gabi, we also have Vitoria. The ones that can share. 
Isabel, if, if possible, Tatiana. Yeah, we, we are just waiting. We have our, we have Pedro Cardoso here, man. Look at that, look at that. Everaldo, Professor Diani, if possible. We are just waiting for everybody to uh, prepare themselves for the picture. Yeah. Anyone else? Professor Ana Flavia, Professor. Oh, we, we have people still uh, doing. We have back the gaming chair of Daniel Britz. <laughs> and we have Nicole. We have Mikkel. We also have Mikkel here. Come on, come on. <laughs> Mr. Danielon Lucas, Danielon in person. Perfect, perfect. Anyone else preparing? Khaled, are you are you going to share? You? Yes. Mm. I'll, I'll wait for Pedro Cardoso because he he was connected, but may, suddenly his picture went out. Yeah, he's back. So oh, now I haven't closed my eyes for five minutes. You have what? <laughs> I kept my eyes open for five minutes, waiting for the picture. To... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the picture will be taken in three, two, one. Perfect, perfect, perfect. We have it. We have it. No, no, and, and let's, take, let's take another one. Why not? Why not taking another one? So uh, I, I already received feedback at the last time that I counted from uh, three. So I'll be counting from 10 again. So <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And wonderful, wonderful, we have it. So that's it. Thank you very much. It was really good, uh, real pleasure. We also had Roberto here, which is the, the final achievement.